This is the Storm and Willow Podcast, a light-hearted, balanced examination of the paranormal. Welcome to the Stormy Willow Podcast. I'm your host, Adele. And I'm your host, Sarah. Hey, Adele and Stormy Willow listeners. Hello. How is everybody? Well, I, not to speak for everybody listening, I'm okay. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same here. I mean, it's still January. I feel like January is the longest month of the year. I'm over it. Oh, I feel like it went fast. I did not. I feel like it went slow. Mm. I'm over it. You're over so it's like, Okay, yeah. You're over <laughs> winter and already. I've been over winter before it began. <laughs> Let's just be real. <laughs> It's like Thanksgiving. I'm over it. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like I love the fall, but then I'm like, nope, I'm ready to go back right into spring. Just skip winter. That'd be great. I love it's that. Just, yeah, it's just the damnedest thing out here. Like, because it's in the 40s, but I swear it feels like it's in the low 60s. Like, it feels like really. Yeah. And see, it's the opposite here. Like, it's in the 50s, but it feels like it's in the 30s to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Wear like a heavy sweatshirt. And I went out to the grocery store. I had like a jacket and all the, like the things. I'm like, no, this is too cold for me. I can't take it. Oh, that's too funny. Um, <laughs> but also, in case you guys missed the the post, uh, Stormy Willow turned one on the 25th. We turned one. Unbelievable. I yeah. feel like we should have done like a looking back. You know. <laughs> yeah, we might do some, like, throwback episodes to the early days. The early the, days the of Little Stormy Willow. Oh yeah. my gosh. Um, do you have one thing that speaks to you from the past year? I bet it's going to be the same thing as me. I mean, overall, I think the sound quality and the format of the show has gotten better. Yes. But as far as, like, a topic, I, I really don't know. I was thinking, for me, the big, the big aha moment was Cincinnati. Oh yeah, that was incredible. That was unreal. That was so fun. We, um, when we started this podcast, we hadn't planned on doing any kind of paranormal, like actual investigations. We just planned on talking about it. <laughs> so for it to kind of the, I don't know, for the podcast to kind of take that turn was really unexpected and really freaking cool. Like we love it. It's kind of opened some doors. Yeah. Yeah, and it definitely has. Really um, and we got... I had to edit a lot from last week's episode. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> it originally was like an hour and 50 minutes. <laughs> I had to try to shave yes. it as close to an hour as I could. Um, but we were also featured in uh, Voyage Ohio magazine. I say yeah. featured. Like, no, we weren't like cover or anything. But anyway. We weren't. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Okay. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> We were beyond honored that they even reached out to us. And it was so funny because, you know, we were in a list of people making differences in the world. And it's like, here we are somehow in this list. <laughs> and it was really, it was really humbling and really cool. And it was such a cool experience. So yeah. thank you. We are beyond humbled. <laughs> <laughs> And we still have a lot to learn. So I think we just keep at it. And, you know, that's the cool thing with podcasting and anything, really. You just kind of keep on trucking along and learning as you go. So, yeah, learn on the job. Yeah, I mean, we haven't quit in one year and I'm pretty impressed. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's pretty awesome. I love it. Well, Adele had a fun weekend. Yeah, we went to see Fortune Feimster. Um, And we we love Fortune Adele and I, because we're from, she's from the surrounding area area where we are, so we really relate to a lot of her comedy. <laughs> oh, she wanted a whole thing about biscuits. And I was like, yeah, girl. <laughs> and Hardee's. Hardee's biscuits. Oh. I'm not going to say anything else. I don't want to spoil any of her content. A girl after our own hearts. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was the first night of her Live, Laugh, Love tour, so... If you have watched her two specials on Netflix, this is completely new content. That's so awesome. Well, we, uh, if you get a chance to check Fortune out, definitely do it. I want to see Fortune Live. I've watched her Netflix and um, I always like it, you know, when when a gal from the South is doing the damn things. So, <laughs> very proud. <laughs> She's uh, hilarious. 
She also talks about ghosts at some point, too. I was like, no fucking way. You're talking about biscuits and ghosts, my two favorite things. Fortune is just destined to be our friend. She just doesn't know it yet. Oh, totally. <laughs> I did find out she occasionally just goes home to Belmont here and there. I'm going to need to start going so to Belmont. We're just going to have to start scoping it out. We're gonna. We might be in Belmont a lot the at the parties. <laughs> we know she might be there in the morning for a biscuit. Okay, done and done. I got it covered, Adele. <laughs> We're just gonna sit at the Hardys in Belmont all day. We can do that no, just we'll until ten thirty break- because they aren't breakfast all day. That's right. She's not That's there by ten thirty. Right. She's not coming. I can commit. I can commit to that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I love that. Well, um, my weekend wasn't as exciting, but there is a new place here in Rock Hill, and it's a 90s dessert bar. And let me just tell you, they play 90s music. They have 90s murals on the wall. So there was like Batman Forever, like mural. Oh, and nice. it was a point. Like, they do milkshakes, coffee, and I got just like, I wanted just a normal iced cappuccino and it tasted like Gloria Jean coffee beans from the mall iced cappuccino and it was it was just wonderful and nostalgic so I'll have to take you there when you come back but they do these milkshakes and they put like icing around the rim and like roll it in like sprinkles or cookie crumbs or whatever like it's it's insane but I just love the vibe I mean the line was out the door and I was like seems like are we really gonna wait for this I was like oh we're gonna wait for this like 100 <laughs> percent. it was so cool so i mean not as exciting as your fun weekend but you know i got a nice iced cappuccino got to listen to some 90s it was a really good time <laughs> it's all good but uh speaking of fun events <laughs> do you have any listen coming up? i do i do have some fun events coming up and, wait February. are you drinking from a solo cup <laughs> i am <laughs> what is this why <laughs> Um, so we did a ruck fist for our uh, workout group. So all the workout groups that I belong to, like around, like we're, we're basically, I'm just going to say the name. They're not affiliated with this podcast. So, um, but it's FIA, Females in Action. And our, you know, it's all over the country. And actually, I think they have one that opened overseas. But we did like, are you familiar with rucking? Like what that is? Like you get like weights. And put it like in a backpack and you walk so like you basically walk it with weights so part of our big 10-year anniversary was to do a ruck event well you know we're special in rock kill so we turned it into a ruck fest get it so like breakfast and mm-hmm. so you had to stop at each house and do like a progressive brunch so like our first stop was uh coffee then we rucked i ran and my friends ran and um, we went to another house where they had like, you know, energy bites. And then my house was the Bloody Mary Mimosa stop. So I had some extra solo cups and I made myself a little screwdriver here for today. Okay, and, like, the next, and like the next one was like bagels. And then it was the final stop where we had like a big like fire pit and my brunch. So where everybody threw up. <laughs> nobody threw up. Everybody <laughs> was like, everybody was great. They did awesome. So it was a really fun event. So I have all these solo cups and I was like, you know, Stephen and I had some mimosas this morning and I was like, you know, my buzz is just like perfect. It's not, you know, I'm not drunk. I'm not like, I'm a little better than sober. So I'm like, I think I just need to sip on a little uh, screwdriver and just keep this niceness going. Oh, so nice yeah, that's why I'm drinking out of a solo cup. Thank you for noticing. I couldn't. <laughs> if you're watching, you noticed. <laughs> I mean, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know that's the thing i love about this, these ladies it's like i know i talk about it a lot but it's like i love how we're like a community of like the most different types of Redux. ladies you could ever <laughs> imagine yeah and we all come together and like anytime we have to do like some big event i mean there's always we always find a way to throw down you know with food and drink so <laughs> we have a really good time <laughs> It's a really awesome, uh, it's a really cool thing. So if you're listening and you're in the Rock Hill area or anywhere in the country, check it out. It's Females in Action. Um, so yeah, I mean, they're totally not affiliated with this podcast. They might be like, oh no, please. <laughs> please do not. Please do not advocate for our great stormy little way. As of tomorrow, you're kicked out. <laughs> As of tomorrow, they're like, um, you can no longer come anymore. But it's it's a, it's women empowering women women, and it's really great. It's well, then you're gonna have to you're gonna have to start Swia a Stormy Willow in action. That's right, <laughs> but it's great. Um, it's always free, and it's you know it's a good way to work out, meet people in your community. It's really cool. So, but speaking of events, other events, uh, 
All right, kicking it off. February 25th in the haunted Savannah, oh. Georgia. You went way out. I did. Well, I wanted to give you guys time, you know? And there's, okay. I feel like January is still kind of, people are still trying to get into the, you know, non-holiday crap. But in um, Haunted Savannah, it's Savannah Horror Fest 2023. Then they are going to have some haunted, they're going to have celebrities, vendors, uh, paranormal enthusiasts, talks. It sounds really awesome. It's going to be from 10 to 5. You know, it looks like the cost starts at $15 a person, but it looks like you get access to quite a lot. So, 15 um, Yes. Dude, that's dirt cheap. I would, yeah. yes. There's I no mean, reason I, not to go. <laughs> yeah, go. Like, it would be so fun. And if you've never been to Savannah, I highly recommend it. I mean, especially, obviously, if you listen to this podcast, um, Savannah is quite a haunted little active location. It's a lot of fun. So go check it out. It would be a great place to uh, get away for the weekend. Um, February the 19th, for our friends in Pennsylvania, uh, Ridgewood Winery in Birdsboro, Pennsylvania, they're going to do a paranormal investigation out at the winery from 4 to 6.30. Wine and you know investigating that sounds like a great place it's february 19th so like what a great like valentine's thing like what just gonna throw that out there very romantic yes very romantic and then also on february 25th for our friends out in kansas there's gonna be a night at the hotel josephine and it's in hot in kansas and it's um the it includes an overnight stay plus a ghost hunt so that sounds like also a great romantic getaway. <laughs> and by the way, guys, well. we we will be there. Already. No, I'm just kidding. One day I'll be able to one say day, that. One day I'm going to tell you what. One day we're going to be so slam packed with all these events. We're going to be there, and we can like make sure you come by to say hi. Yeah, that's, that's what I. Be awesome. That us. will be when we have arrived. When we have arrived, and we can say we're going to be at all these locations. Come see us. At- yeah, well, they might. You know, you might actually know who we are. But guess what, Adele? I do have to tell you something really, really big. I've had not one, not two, not three, but four requests for the Stormy Willow jackets. I even had one at a brewery this week. My friends right. that I run with, they started listening to the podcast and like, hey, wh- where can we order the Stormy Willow jackets? So <laughs> we're going to have to get heck? on that. So if you don't know what we're talking about, if you watched our episode, uh, we did a Halloween special where we did our first um, official paranormal investigation and we ordered these uh, like these little jackets just, you know, because we just wanted like to little be windbreakers. Yeah, they're like little windbreakers. And I think it, the jackets got more attention than our actual work we did. So yeah. <laughs> we're going to have to put those out. <laughs> I, I don't know why I was always like, let's get a successful show first and then merch. But it sounds I like know. we need to go the other way with it. I think we were wrong about it because I've, I've been asked more about the jackets and the actual the, the investigation. I'm like, not really into the investigation, which podcast is about, but definitely want that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Everybody's been awesome. Um, two of my friends have actually come up with some haunted workplaces they want investigated. So I'm so excited that people are, are feeling comfortable to talk to us about these things. Like we really, we can't tell you how much it means to us. Like in all sincerity, it means the world. So we, uh, we appreciate it more than, you know, we yeah, really do. Sweet. And we'll maybe get with our Etsy um, friend that made these amazing jackets for us. Um, let's see what we can come up with. I mean, I, I, nobody, nobody has wanted the stamps, the stamp stickers. But, uh, I can't get uh, rid literally of those. when we were at like the this cool food court downtown. And by food court, I mean like the hip new f- food courts, not like oh, what is the hip? What's what's the difference? I don't know. The, I don't know. Court. It's just a big thing out here. Like a I've food never, court. Like no, don't no, have no. the mall, just the food court. We have like tin can alleys, so it's like all of those like um truck tankers like stacked, and it's kind of just a big food court, but it's like all these different layers, so you kind of feel like you're in mm. different restaurants. They're like really That's cool. cool. Um, That's cool. You're so hip. I mean, I, but I've only seen them in Albuquerque. I don't know if they were in Chicago, and I just never I saw feel them. Like there's one in Charlotte, or some in Charlotte as well. Uh, but it's just like, I'm such a '90s. I just grew up in the '90s. So when you say food court, like I'm right, you think like the mall. Pizza. I'm like, thinking like yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Just I'm thinking 
the food court without the mall. So it sounds yeah. really frustrating to me. <laughs> it's just right. like a vacant mall with an open food court. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's not that. I mean, it's more like a food hall, I guess. Food hall, that sounds terrible to you. It sounds like yeah. a big mall. Because <laughs> we also have like the sawwood mill. And it's pretty much just like a big food court and a brewery. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a really good time. But it's it's cool. It's like a cool food court. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there was, there. there was a bulletin board of all like the cool hip stuff coming up. Like, you know, and Amanda, my wife, was like, you should put one of your Stormy Willow stickers. It's like, nobody would see it. You mean the stamps? <laughs> <laughs> you should. You should just put them all around town and I'll put them all around town. Just put like a bunch of them everywhere. I'll do it if you will. I don't have any stamps. You can't. Oh. Well, I'll make I, I think, next. I, I'll do like I think you weren't really account. fond on taking them when I offered them. I think you're like, thank you. That's what, how I, I remember that going down. <laughs> Actually. Yeah, pretty much. I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't mail things. I don't need a stamp. <laughs> I do online baking. I don't mail my check. Oh, here we go. You're always going to hold that over my head that I still yeah. write checks. Get okay, with the, the century. Whatever. Well, speaking of getting with it, uh, what did, what what's up with the with our forecast this week? I would say the forecast is pretty on point to the essence of a Stormy Willow show. Uh-oh. I don't know um, if that's good or bad. <laughs> it depends on who you ask. Um, it's literally the like the sh- like, the jackets or the show. <laughs> the show. Shit. The show. <laughs> We're screwed. <laughs> No, I mean, it, the first of the week is supposed to be really easy going. Sounds like us. Totally. Um, and this is a time for follow through on your intentions at a steady progress. So there's not going to, it literally said no overnight miracles. Okay. So we're not going to just be an instant hit. Um, and you're literally learning on the job and you're figuring it out as you go this week. That is us to a T. Yeah, but the good news is there are no retrogrades at all this week. I no. did see that, um, and I was like, wow, that's wonderful. Um, and then next Sunday, there will be full moon in Leo. So, oh, your favorite. Yeah. So I'll well, let you forecast. tell us next week what that's going to be like being in under the nice, beautiful moonlight of Leo. Um <laughs> But I just wanted to mention this is Aquarius season. So happy birthday to all of you guys who were born January 20th through February 18th. You're an Aquarius if you didn't know. Um, So one of the air signs and you guys are progressive, unique, independent, intelligent, and idealistic. So happy birthday. Hey, that's not a bad thing to be. Yeah. Love a good Aquarius. Very good. For the forecast this week. Well, happy birthday, Aquarius friends. Yeah. Yeah, that's wow. awesome. What are their what's their symbol? I don't know. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Is yes. It I, I have to look it up. I'm terrible. Obviously, um, I only know mine. Well, obviously you would because you know. Uh, I'm getting a lot of things here. Yeah, it's like the little wind, like the Yeah, it's like a little like zigzag. The, the little doodly doos. Yeah. yeah. It's like a little, oh, almost like a wave. Wait. Oh, that would make sense if it was. It's like a bowl with water. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. I love it. Well, happy birthday, Pretty she. Neat. Happy birthday. Yeah, like maybe get a tattoo with that or something. It's a good idea. That sounds like a good thing to do this week. <laughs> it does. Just, yeah. you know, why not? All right. Do you remember what I spun on the big wheel? phenomenon yeah. phenomenon and let me tell you i'm really excited about this one for three three reasons one um it takes place near you and two it impacts my husband and my dog so <laughs> really do you have any idea what it could possibly be <laughs> the fuck uh hearing loss your atomic bomb tests you're very, very close. It's a little thing called the Taos Hum. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. And it doesn't just take place in Taos. It takes mm-hmm. place all over the world. But Taos is certainly a hot spot for it. And so, when I, you know, a, ph- a phenomenon 
is such a hard thing to land on because really it can be anything from ghosts to theories to you can just go anywhere with it so this came up on my feed and I started kind of reading about it and I'm like oh I'm kind of into this so I decided to to do this for the the story so before I get started just wanted to give a shout out and say hey to my sources um thank you livescience.com uh mystery of the Taos home of New Mexico um on grunge.com Cracking the Mystery of the World Wide Hum at the conversationstation.com and the World Hum Map and Database Project um, at the hum.info. And so if you're not familiar with Taos, um, it is in North Central New Mexico and it's like a real artsy kind of community. And I'm going to see if you think this is interesting. It's also the home of Julia Roberts, Dennis Hopper, and Donald Rumsfeld. And if you don't remember who Donald Rumsfeld was or is, he was the Secretary of Defense in 75 through 77 and again in 2001 to 2006. So wonder if maybe that might have something to do with some of our theories about why we have a Tao song. Interesting. I've also tr- heard in like Project Pegasus um that there were like all sorts of meetings with people that have taken place in New Mexico. So it's yeah, really the perfect place for shit like that. Cause there's like nobody that really lives here. Yeah. Like it's a very, um, it's a very small community and it's just, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what you think about it. it just some fun facts about Taos if you're not familiar with it. Um, and there are, you know, like I said, like it is also has been um, a place that is identified as this home that happens all over the world. But Taos has been identified as a hotspot for this home. And of course, there have been lots of theories about it, right? So it ranges from just like psychological to the paranormal. Um, it's even been said, oh, it's just a bunch of stone tippies. It's really nothing to it's a government mind control. Or maybe it's UFOs. So we're going to get into all these different theories and kind of break them down and see what you think about it. Um, But some other places that experience the same thing as in Taos is in Bristol, England, um, British Columbia, all over the globe. They have had very similar phenomenons. And so I'm kind of focusing on Taos, but I'm also going to focus on the other places too. Um, just like Taos, I felt a connection because of you. So, <laughs> and as I said, um, so my husband, Stephen, um, he suffers from tinnitus. Some people call it t- tetanus, but you could, I, I read where you can say it either way. There's, it's the same. So what it is, is, is tinnitus is like a constant ringing or hum in your ear that you hear all the time. It's just constant. And so he started it like hearing this thing a few years ago, just out of nowhere. And um, for those of you that, that don't know either, we adopted a beagle. It'll be a year ago in March. And like, she has really weird hearing things. Like when the microwave goes off, certain pitches of sounds, like when I get a text message, she goes ballistic. And so, you know, she's a test beagle, but I often wonder what on earth they were testing on her, mm-hmm. you know? And so when I saw this story, it made me think of Steven and Birdie and just kind of like, what is going on? So you might be like, where, where did this all start? So the Taos home started in the early 1990s. Um, there was a professor, Joe Mullins. He's a professor of engineering at the University of New Mexico, which I ran around a lot when uh, you live there. Love that campus. <laughs> and um He started to conduct research um, based on this Taos Tom and a survey of residents, about 2% of the people in Taos of their general population believed to detect this home. So 2% of the population of Taos were like, I hear this ringing. So he brought some equipment to the houses of the people that were hearers or what they called to them. And unfortunately, nothing scientific could be proven. He couldn't find any kind of like, physical evidence in their homes of of what might be causing them to hear this ring and other people not. And so the report's conclusion basically read that we're left with the mystery as we are with the paranormal, right? Like it's so Mm -hmm. hard to find that concrete like 
this is what's causing this. And so, um, so that, that kind of sucks for him. He couldn't find any kind of reason why these people were here in this home. And so um, some people uh, led to them to like really start speculating. And so I remember when I mentioned Donald Rumsfeld, people first are like, it's the government a hundred percent that they, they believe that they were using noises as weapons because of the debilitating effects of the sound. And so the, um, some reports said that they believed that they were using these things that were called LARDS, L-A-R-D-S, and it stands for Long Range Acoustic Devices. And apparently they have used these things like um, in Ferguson, whenever all the protests were going on, they used this device for like to try to calm crowds at the protests. And they used these devices on Somali pirates. So apparently I had no idea that... Um, sound was being used as like a war antic which i thought was really bizarre <laughs> so you know who else uses that who? harris teeter what like the one near south park mall in pineville north carolina mm-hmm. you know that like tweeting sound it makes like near the doors no i've never really paid attention it's specifically supposed to be annoying only to teenagers <gasps> to try to keep like kids like They're from, from loitering. loitering and stuff yeah really Mm -hmm. that's so interesting and what was really interesting is some people couldn't hear it but whenever i was in my early 20s i could so now i'm curious if i could hear it now if you go back if you could hear it well i had no idea that sound was being used in that way like until i read this article and Mm -hmm. it said like and this this statistic i mean it may not blow your mind but it blew mine that the World Health Organization reported that roughly 10,000 people die each year due to chronic sound exposure. 10,000. So you know how my wife, Amanda, works for the with the deaf and hard of hearing now, even right. though she's historically worked with well, everybody that falls under special yeah. education. Yeah, it's um, amazing. We love actually, Amanda. like it's made her learn a lot about the stress of hearing. Um how much it uses your brain power, all the white noise and everything, it can really stress out your body. God, so I, I can totally see how that makes people die. Yeah. The stress on their body from all the noise. That statistic, like I had to like reread it a few times. I'm like 10,000 people die each year from chronic like noise exposure. And, that right? was baffling to me. Noise I had no idea is a real thing like it It, really stresses out your body i had no idea until i read about this and so um you know so people like with the government and like they were thinking oh you know donald rumsfeld lives here like there are a lot of weird you know there are so many ufo-y kind of government things happening there so like it wouldn't make sense that maybe they're testing some of these noises out without us really knowing so that's that's just one conspiracy theory it's not confirmed but it's just they're thinking oh well that this could be it well Mm -hmm. one geoscientist is also a hum hearer and that's what they call people that hear this they call them hum hearers and so he was like i gotta figure this out like so i what is this so he wrote a paper back in 2004 his name is david Deming, and he described um he said that the the very first home that he could find that was documented was in the 60s. And it took place in Bristol, England. It's the first time it was ever documented. But it first appeared in the United States in the 90s in Taos, Mex- you know, New Mexico. And so he just trying to start throwing out theories and like disproving them. So the first theory was t- like cell phone towers. So he examined um, different sources um, and that he kind of like compared them like to where the people weren't hearing it to how close they were to an electric grid for cell phone towers but he bashed that theory because he's like well that doesn't make sense because how would people in the 60s be able that wouldn't impact somebody in the 60s because we didn't have cell phone towers so he kind of like he's like damn that theory doesn't work but he was thinking that maybe somehow the frequency from the cell towers and the electric grid somehow blocked out something or caused something, some like some kind of noise pollution that only certain people could hear. So, but he he's like that doesn't track because it would have to be the same that happened in the sixties. So it was like, eh, nope. And then he started with the mass hysteria, um, which I think was interesting. He said that yeah. um, 
people started talking about this phenomenon on social media and he thought, well, maybe are people reading this? And then they're like, oh, well, maybe I have it too. And so it's like caused like mass hysteria. He's like, maybe, like, maybe not, you know, um, he couldn't really argue that one. Well, we were in Taos eating those delicious uh, Impossible Burgers, remember? Oh, so Did good. you? I didn't hear a hum. I don't remember hearing a hum in Taos. Yeah, I don't really remember. And I was thinking when we went to Taos, and I was like, did I remember hearing anything? And I don't remember. I don't remember at all. I just, yeah, I, I do remember, like, having the best Impossible Burger I've ever had in my life. It was it really delicious. Was good. I wish I remember the name of the place. It was, like, well, literally just in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, we'll, but it, we'll tag you guys somehow. It was packed. It was, I mean, that place was packed. And oh, right it was so good. So. It was so good. It was so good. Um, you ate all of yours in half of my I sure did. <laughs> I have zero regrets. It was so good. So another theory is high-frequency active auroral research program, which is referred to as HARP. And so HARP is a military compound in Alaska, and it uses radio waves to study outer space for testing advanced communication techniques. And so they, so this is a favorite theory with, uh, with the conspiracy groups. It's, they're saying that they basically say that this facility in Alaska basically does tests ranging on mind control to weather control and they've studied the possibility of um auto acoustic emissions where um there's some like naturally occurring sounds are caused by vibration of hair cells in the ear so they're doing all these crazy things but they're not telling people that they're a part of the research so that's that's a famous conspiracy theory is that it's the heart program and they're just like picking their towns to do this research Again, it's a hundred percent conspiracy. What what are they trying to find? I don't There's know. A question with that. <laughs> it's like they're trying to speak to. I mean, they're trying to. Speak, you know, and, and we'll get into this in a minute. And I thought this this was my. And I'll tell you. Maybe I'll wait till we get there. I'll wait till we get there. But um, I just think that they're just just testing different things that they can do with sound. But it's like why. Yeah, I don't know. And like, and if you're trying to basically predict weather or predict or try to change how you communicate with outer space, like, why are you using people? Yeah, like, I, I don't I understand, don't understand the point in it. Yeah. So, it sounds like, if anything, it's a small nuisance. It's just like, why? Are, are you just trying? Yeah. Or is it not? Do they not mean it to be a nuisance? Like, they really are doing like this research in outer space, and this is one of the side effects. Is that some people are sensitive to hearing I mean, it. If they're finding out something very fascinating or helpful about outer space and it's just causing a little hum, that's fine. Yeah, but it's too bad I can't say it, you know. Like, oh, right. we're not trying to drive you crazy. We're just like, you know, do you want something great? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but that was one of them. Um, another theory is submarines, <laughs> which submarines use, which I'm like, submarines and towels. I don't know. <laughs> there's um so submarines use a very low frequency uh VLF radio wave and they're saying that um the world's military powers use massive land based and airborne transmitters on these same frequencies in order to communicate with submarines and so they're like well maybe the radio waves at these frequencies can um you know make someone go a little they can hear it if they have like just a certain amount of the right kind of hearing like maybe some people can hear it i feel like that's a little uh that is that supposedly really like a new way for them to communicate because we've had i don't think so. since like the world war yeah exactly so i don't i don't think so either think um makes sense. so none of these theories or strong cases for what this could be. Um, so in late 2012, uh, there there's this website and it's called the uh, World Hum Map and Database Project. And it was created by Dr. McPherson. And this database gathers documents and like detailed maps of information from people who can hear this hum. And it provides raw data for research. Um, and it's very moderated and it's a very serious form of research. So they're really funny about you like bringing up these 
these like crazy conspiracy theories they're like absolutely not this is 100 percent documented we don't we don't have time for these conspiracy crap you know so they're they're just basically want to map exactly where it's happening and get detailed up you know information about it and they say that um one thing that they were able to collect from this database is that many of the sufferers um hear this hum at night and they all um they all, which is weird, is that's where it impacts Stephen too, is mostly at night. And also, um, most of the people have been torment, like tormented by this noise for many years. And they all say that it drives them absolutely crazy. Um, the project also tries to validate and harmonize the phenomenon by discussing, you know, like, hey, I have this too. Like, you're not alone. And um, one of the things that comes up is um, tinnitus. And they're like, you know, it's a medical condition where like you can hear you're a little more sensitive to hear like the high pitched squealing tones like birdie hears. And mm -hmm. they said that those who experience tinnitus are usually um, they, they report it. They, they just report like a lot of the same things, like the same kind of pitches that they hear. Mm -hmm. And the uh, map was last updated on June 6th and it shows at least 10,000 map and data points where they have found people that hear this hum. Um, and they um, have found that the median age of hum hearers is between 40 and a half years old. Uh, I'm sorry, 40, 40 and a half years and 55% of the hearers are men. Steven started hearing the hum when he turned 50 or 40. So that's kind of interesting, you know, and he's you know a male. So that so tends to be like. Really makes it sound physiological then. Yeah, I think so too. And they said that, um, this is also interesting. They also said that eight times as many ambidextrous people, so those are people that can use their right or their left hand, are um, also suffer from this. And uh, they just try to, on this project, just collect data like that so they can kind of narrow down, like you said, like agree that it impacts. Um, and again, like they don't look at any kind of like conspiracies. They're just trying to find commonalities and people that hear this. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's really, it's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, so the home, like I said, it's just most people really do just say it's tinnitus. Like that's it. And they just like, they put this bag on it. And like with Steven, um, there's like nothing he can do about it. Like he can try to listen to white noise or different things to try to calm it. But like a hearing aid or something like that doesn't help tinnitus at all. So it kind of makes you think like, what is it like you know what i mean like it's just i don't know it's just very interesting um yeah one thing that i thought was really cool um and and this is the one that i that i thought was very interesting uh so have you ever heard of like animals being able to predict like when an earthquakes come in or bad weather or like mm -hmm. animals um like our mom's dog chuck could always sense whenever our stepdad was about to have a seizure mm -hmm. they kind of equate this ringing to that like could it be like some kind of geological like something like sending you a message that you know something's out of whack with the earth and some people are just more sensitive to hearing that just like some animals are sensitive to you know knowing that bad weather is coming or that something's about to happen like to their owner i kind of like that theory but um, has, i mean i guess the only validation they could get is when something bad does happen but right. if people are hearing this for years what good is that i mean but could it be like a climate like connected like to a climate change type of thing you know what i mean like something's not quite right with the earth you know i i don't know either um and unfortunately, like, there wouldn't be any data that goes back very far to... Right. You know, like, you can't go back 200 years and be like, I wonder if people heard a humming. Like, how would you even go about trying to find that out? Right. And and that's the thing. And then, like, some people say, too, that it just... It could also be a, ge a genetic predisposition, you know? Or it could be the result from toxic toxicity, noise pollution, medication... I mean, it could, it could also, be a lot of things. It could also be mental. Like, a lot of, like, auditory processing disorder, that's nothing wrong with your hearing. It's your interpretation of the sound. It's your brain. 
Right. What if it's their brains and not their hearing? Exactly. I mean, who knows? And, but like, what makes it happen all of a sudden, like in your mid, like you're, you know, about 40, 40 and a half years old. And why do more men, the women hear it? I don't know. I mean, weird. And then why does Birdie have that sort of stuff? Like, and then, you know, we don't know like what lab she was from or what she was tested, but how she is with like certain pitch, it is pitches because like, for example, like, you know, she could, she could, like, I could drop this computer on the floor and she would be fine. But if you were to send me a text and that pitch makes her go bananas, it gets just certain pitches. And it's like, were they trying to test stuff on her? That has to do with this, like noise and how it can harm people or like drive you crazy. I just don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. I just think of something darker that probably happened to her and that they were experimenting on it and she just associated that sound to something bad. Yeah, it could be that to you. I think she was just like classically conditioned. Yeah. Well, I it's, guess that would I be, know. that wouldn't be like, anyway, you know what I mean? I think she was conditioned right. somehow. But I think it's very interesting, like, you know, and it's like, you kind of like, yeah, like it could just be a hundred percent. Like, you know, this is just, there's just so little known about it. And I just think that it's just so weird that like, I know with Steven, it's just, it was so bizarre. Like one day he literally woke up with this ringing in this home. Yeah. That's weird. Out of the blue, you know? So it, it's very, very bizarre. So yeah, I mean, it's a weird phenomenon. It really is. And I really do. I mean, the one thing that I thought was really cool and um, it's just to raise the public awareness about it, you know, mm -hmm. especially like that statistic, like, you know, sometimes we don't, I don't know, I guess like sometimes we don't really think about these things that they don't really happen to us, you know, but yeah. seeing how like just seeing it like with Steven and everything, it just kind of, you know, just makes it, it makes your mind kind of wonder like, you know, is it just a condition that we just don't know that much about? Or are some people, like, you know, how they'll talk about these theories where it's like people are kind of more connected to universe in different ways and they can sense things. Like, are these people connected and are, are sensing this home and like something sending them a signal that something's not right or something's, I don't know, it out of whack. We think of, are they, you know, like in yoga and Hinduism, the sound of the universe is Aum yes like are they just hearing that <laughs> maybe are they hearing like a cry for help i mean are they, are they i don't know like i think it's it, like I, I think it's like two different things it's can we prove that the sound is like a physical sound in this world because that's even more creepy if we can prove that it's not and they're all hearing something yes and how do you go about proving it see that's the thing that's the thing about this whole this whole situation is how can you scientifically prove that right like i mean i would assume you could try to take certain readings of like the decibels or frequencies but i don't really know how you'd have a proper baseline there's yeah i mean it's the world there's going to be cars that drive by there's going to be wildlife there's always going to be something that, <laughs> yes and so that's why i really do think that these projects I, I, if anything with the stormy willow um story i just wanted to bring awareness to it so if you're someone listening that may have experienced this home like i really do hope that you can go out to uh the world home map and database project and check it out and maybe map your location or see if you and can like, hear it in other locations like yeah I, like can they can these people hear it all over the world like i, I wish they would take it to that level and maybe they have of experiments yes. like if you can they hear have. it in house can you also hear it in bristols and vice versa Yes, that would be um, interesting. Like, I think there's so much more experimentation. But like I said, I think the creepy, like, if we could rule out, like, this isn't a sound that's in this physical world. That would be so much more creepy. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're, like, they're really, like, com like communicating with outer space or like, something. Like, really don't you know? understand what they're hearing. <laughs> they're actually, well, and they don't. And I just think it's so weird how, you know, it's not something you're born with. You know, it just happens one day. And I can literally testify to that it's just like it just literally happens one day and it never you know goes though? away piggybacking off of last week's episode maybe they're all walk-ins <laughs> you know yes 
I what is, is that a sign of a walk? <laughs> Steven has been a lot more sassy in his forties. He has. He's not as chill as he used to be. So is this the different soul that we're dealing with? Who the hell is this? It's like, uh oh. So yeah, like if somebody you the, love the, the a... old man soul that's more cranky and has ringing in his he ears. He turned into my sweet Steven turned into Medea. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, I don't know, Adele. I think it's creepy. Well, at least I'm close to Taos. Maybe next time we could try to do some experiments. We'll send Steven in again. Well, like, see, that's the thing. He hears it always. So he's like, I don't hear anything I don't different. Know. Like, that's true. Same but we should not hear it in Taos. Yeah, but I feel so good here, guys. I'm fixed. I'm cured. And it's just like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> or it's even worse there. And he's like, ah. <laughs> Get me <out> of here. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, we have to do experiments with Steven. <laughs> and the rule test will be Birdie. It'll yeah. Be Birdie again. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I don't know, but that that's my story about I'm the house. Sticking song. to it. I'm sticking to it. And I don't know what it is. Um but I definitely think, you know, there's I mean, and that's the thing too, that like even when Steven was researching about tinnitus. There's really not much on that either. Well, it's like chronic fatigue, right? Like, it's like, well, you just have that now. (laughs) Yes, it's pretty much just like, well, you know, just listen to some white noise. Was that? Well, I constantly have like, like Like that's the problem. (laughs) It won't stop. (laughs) Exactly, but I think noise is really weird. Like, you know, they. I never realized the place I work they used to like pump white noise through until like like we lost power or something one day and like the white noise wasn't on and it was just so like, weird what? it was like what's happening and it, like yeah. you said i think most stores have that sort of thing too going on so like if they didn't you would feel like really bizarre and just, i don't say i'm just weird it, it really, really affects is. like i remember when i worked in the loop and the loud ass trains in chicago like i could physically feel more stressed like I think that's the reason we kind of, not the reason, but another reason. It's just like, it's so peaceful and quiet out here. Yeah. Like, which we love Chicago, but you really, if you're anywhere near that freaking L, like, you can't have peace and quiet. Like, and it's not (laughs) even that loud, but it's like, there's so much constant noise. You don't even realize it until you're out of the city and you're like, damn, it's loud there. (laughs) Yeah. You just kind of get pretty, I guess you just get used to but that all noise. Your mind is still processing all of those sounds. It can't not do that. And then that stresses out your body. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, I think that's interesting, guys. Sounds, it's, um, it's weird. It's a killer. It is a killer. 10,000 a year. Yeah. Now, I still cannot get over that statistic. It's crazy. So, guys, take your peace and quiet serious. No kidding. And hopefully you just won't wake up one day with this uh, hum. But you and mentioned you my theory. <laughs> you you mentioned a guy named Mullen that studied this. Yeah. And this is a mysterious hum. I think it's yes. you two rattle and hum. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the Mullins is spelled differently. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that was a good theory, but you know, I'm always here and rattle of home in my head. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest. So talking about being the biggest YouTube fan. So the, is it called Funko Pops? It's yeah. Fun. So I've gotten about three text messages from people that have gone to Walmart and they've got the YouTube Funko Pops. So I'm glad Nobody's that. Nobody's just bought it for you. No one's just bought it for me, but they're, they're, they've been blowing up my phone thinking about me when they see them. That's nice of them to tell you that it's there, not just grab it for you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. Um, but I'm just I'm glad people always associate me with you too. It just I don't know. Like it makes me feel like I mean, I don't know if I'll I'll never reach the the um the goodness that Bono does in the world, but thank you for thinking of me. <laughs> thank you, <of> team. <laughs> Means a lot. I'll keep striving for excellence. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if Bono can hear the home. Ah, uh, uh, I don't know. You know, since I've never got to meet him, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm asking him, like, are you here? I feel like you are. Are you, Do you hear the hum? I'm like, I always hear the hum, Sarah. 
<laughs> Mama's in my heart. <laughs> you would definitely say something profound and wonderful. Yeah, for sure. And I would like pass out on the floor like a jackass. <laughs> 100 <laughs> percent so you remember that time you finally met bono and you asked him if he was a hearer <laughs> and you passed out and crapped yourself oh <laughs> yes i do <laughs> yeah yeah i have a little bit of an anxiety issue guys if you have picked up on that i'm a little, i think what they, i think i'm what they call socially awkward <laughs> yeah a little bit a little bit so that that's the story of rattle and hum i mean the taos hum yeah well, it's an interesting one it makes me want to go up to taos i know Do some tests i know like, what are be, they doing that'll be a summertime well springtime thing i don't know what they're doing in taos and bristol i'm not sure what they're testing but or if they're testing anything i don't know oh, if it's just maybe everybody's just crazy i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something. That's a mystery solved and everything we do. Everybody yeah. is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's usually what it comes. Oh, it's just a sick, sad world. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. You solved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely check out that website if you are a hearer of this noise, just so that they can kind of collect some data and try to figure out some commonalities and uh, figure this out. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Or if you phone home. Good luck. Just keep us posted. Just start blogs. Or something. Yeah. Make sure you uh, you tell your new extraterrestrial friends about Stormy Willow and where to find us. <laughs> We'd love to interview them. <laughs> we would love. We would love to be the first on the scene. <laughs> yes. for that, for sure. <laughs> oh well, there, there she goes. That's the story. Stick into it. She'll yeah, see what uh, next week's story might be. Yeah, let's spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Are we ready? All right, here We're we ready. go. Let's go. Oh. Oh, no, it's not doing there anything. There we go. <laughs> it's like, ooh. Uh, it did like a counterclockwise thing. Uh, uh, I can't get theory again. No, you can't do theory I'm again. i hide that choice. Sorry. Although I do have a good one. I do have another good theory. I mean, you can do it again. I don't want to bore everybody. All right, ghost haunting. Yes, that. that's like I our like roots. It. Like that's the core yes. of our show, really. That really is. Like we we've been a little all over the place. So yes. All right, I'll do it. Heck I yeah. will do it. The hard part will be Wait. choosing only one. That will be the hard part. There's so many good ones. Yeah, so many good ones. I love it. Well, Wait, when is? Let me look at the calendar. Mine will be maybe okay. No, never mind. All right, I was I'm trying to tie in more like of upcoming events and holidays. Oh <laughs> so yeah, we got Valentine's Day coming up. Yeah, but yeah, it's also Black will... History Month starting on the first. Yes, it so is. I might do something related to haunted things related to that. I love that. I think that's a great idea for sure. And as we say here in Stormy Willow, thank you for joining us. Stay safe out there, you guys. Stay curious. And never trust, trust the, living. the living. Bye, you guys. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>